There are a lot of factors to consider when deciding if an aerial combat game is worth playing. Obviously, the combat is important, as is the sound design and of course the graphics. But the one factor that a lot of these games neglect is the sweet serenity that comes from simply flying across the vast empty space unperturbed. And this is where the Falconeer shines. In the Falconeer, you take on the role of one of various type of Falconeers, a person who rides a flying mount into battle in the Great Ursi, a world that is 95% water. Falconeers are typically equipped with a primary gun and secondary rockets. They use these weapons to take down other enemies by land, sea, or sky. And that's the primary gameplay. Simple, right? Politics play a heavy role in the Falconeer as you experience the story of several different factions, told across a prologue, an epilogue, and four chapters. After completing each chapter, you move on to the next faction, giving you a new perspective of the world events as they unfold. What I did find was interesting was that all four chapters are available right from the start of the game. So if you want to, you can jump directly to chapter four, but the missions there might be too difficult to complete as a level one falconeer. The Imperial flagship! No! The Empress! You traitors! I played them in order and on the normal difficulty, so I didn't have much trouble, save for one or two difficulty spikes that essentially forced me to step away from the main story and explore. By doing so, I was able to find other outposts and vendors that the game doesn't tell you about. As a matter of fact, if it's one thing I can complain about here, and this is really a minor complaint, is that the game doesn't explain a whole lot of, well, anything really. It doesn't tell you that you can buy better weapons for your mount. It doesn't explain that you can equip mutagens that increase your mount's speed, agility, or health regen. But at the same time, that's kind of the charm of the game. This is not an arcade aerial combat game. Every mission does not consist of adrenaline rush action. There are escort missions where you protect a deep sea diving ship while it pulls up treasure, you carry it back to their port, and nothing else happens. There are also missions to defend bases, deliver mail from one port to another, hunt down and kill pirates, along with a ton of other side missions. And because the Great Ursi is so vast, choosing not to fast travel is plenty rewarding as you listen to the sounds of the ocean while flying from location to location. One of the highest points for the Falconeer is easily the sound design. I've honestly never paid much attention to who composed the music in a video game, but if you haven't heard of him, Benedict Nichols is nothing short of amazing. Here, let me show you. Pause this video, go throw on some headphones, and crank the volume to max. Ready? Here we go. See what I mean? And that bar does not get lowered throughout the entire game. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. Flying in the Falconeer feels great. The controls are intuitive and at no point during combat did I feel like my mount was not doing what I wanted it to do. Completing the timed racing trials to unlock the better mounts for purchase did get a bit tricky though. Most of these races require that you fly very close to land and your mount's hitbox is larger than it seems. Get too close to land and your mount gets flustered causing you to lose precious seconds. Oh, and remember those difficulty spikes I mentioned earlier? Those are easily rectified by upgrading your main gun. But the actual aerial combat, unfortunately, lacks palpability. You don't really feel like you're in a dogfight, and on more than a few occasions I died because I didn't notice how low my health had gotten. 
It's almost like the game veers so heavily into the serene that it can't seem to find its way back to the intense. The new Edge of the World DLC provides a new area, three new mini campaigns accompanied by nine new missions, two new playable classes with unique mounts, and the Imperial Shocklands weapon, which can damage multiple targets at once. All this new content is integrated so smoothly into the game I couldn't tell if I had access to it or not, and one of the best features of the Falconeer is just how responsive Thomas Sala and their Discord community is. More than once I got stuck in a mission, and within minutes of reaching out for help on the Discord, Thomas Sala himself responded and helped me through. If you decide to pick up the Falconeer, which I highly recommend you do, make sure you join their Discord. I'll leave an invite link to it in the description below. Just be aware that if you're looking for an edge of your seat dogfighting adrenaline rush, then you will be disappointed. However, if you want to experience one of the most unique aerial combat games to date with meditative exploration, then the Falconeer may be just what you're looking for. <laughs>